for the privacy. Oh gosh. I hope this isn't on yet. Okay, I guess I'm live. This on the app. You all how I do my winter trees. I was asked quite a few times about them. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom this out and get it fixed. So I'm gonna use this as a reference, but you can go on Google and Google winter scenes and you can see all kinds of trees and use them as a reference. So uh, you're not gonna do exactly what they tell you and you know, what everybody sees, these are very abstract. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. And I'm gonna do a real quick one. You know, I'm gonna do it in smaller because smaller paintings take less time. I just wanna make sure I'm right there. Okay, let's get busy. So first of all, my background, I want to get that in there. And everything in this is just black and white. So I'm going to use a pouncing tool that I already have with a lot of black in it. And I'm going to spritz it. And I'm just going to do some background trees. And I know that they kind of go like that. And so I, I, I don't care. They're not, this is out of my mind, basically. I just know how the trees look because they're very faded in the background, and then I build up my docks. And I, you really don't want to split your painting in half, so I'm bringing it down a little bit, just a little bit, to make the background a little bit further back. And as it comes forward, it will lighten up a bit. OK, that looks good. Now, this is where I want my tree that I want. I'm just going to put it here. And I'm just using that pouncing tool because look at all the texture I'm getting. So that's what this is all about is texture. I'll come up into my palette and wipe it into that little bit of black there and reinforce the dock in the edge if I want. Uh, I can even add a little spritz of alcohol in this other area on my palette. Reload a little bit more black. So it's a little darker right there. And I turn my pouncing tool because I want it to be different everywhere. But I want it to be a little vignette -y and I would like it a little darker on the edges. And maybe a little darker right here and right there. So you see how you can really control. Look at it, it already looks like a winter scene. And all I do is smash. So now this is how I do my, um, my little trees or bushes or whatever you might want to do. I'm just going into black. And I'm saying, okay, I think I would like a little tree here and I'm just gonna squiggle it up. And I want it to be a big tree, so we'll just give it some character. And I'm gonna go get some more ink. So I know that I want this area to be the center of interest or I want this area. You know, you've got to decide what you want as a center of interest. I think on this one, I'm gonna make this side the center of interest because the other one I was the other area. So I like my paintings to always be a little different. And maybe I'll put another one behind it. And the wigglier your hand is, the better you're gonna be. Now there's less on my brush, so I'm gonna bring a few of these little dark designs back here, Some maybe some growth back there. Who knows, just scribble. Okay, so then up at the top, I want it to be, now there's less on my brush so I can control how light it will be. See how pretty that is? It gets a little lighter and further away. Then I can tickle inside of this and break this up a little bit. I'm not real worried about perfectness at this point. It's just a sketch, but I do want to get my bones in here. Do you see how you're looking here now instead of over here? So that's what I'm, I'm watching for. And I know that this will be a little darker right there. Maybe this is Got something else coming out right there. Who knows? It's nature. Nature's always different. So that looks really cute. I'm, now that I got less on my brush, I can bring out some little lines of some tree limbs and little twigs. I love doing twigs. They, they have so much character. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly. I'm not going to really fuss a lot because you'll get the idea, and that's basically what I want to do is get you the idea. So I'm just like, tapping a little dock in here. Now I want to remember that the shadow under here is coming towards me. So I want to make sure it comes out a little bit. I want to follow the idea that there's a little shadow coming this way. So this is more strength on this particular section. 
and maybe a little shadow there because it still would cast a shadow down. You keep in mind your shadows and all, because if you do, you're going to have a very beautiful result. I don't want to lose my whites back here. And I don't want to lose my whites at the sky. So I want that to be like that. But I want you to come into the painting. So I might start a little with that dirty brush and just bring you in a little bit, but leaving holes for the white to show. See how pretty that is? Okay, so now I'm gonna throw some more branches. I wanna really reinforce those branches. So I'll get some of the uh, pitch black and put it in my palette. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but here, I'll just put it there, it's no big deal. But this is nice and dark and thick and runny. So I gotta just dry it out a little bit but I want it dark right in here, right here. I want this branch to come in front, so, and the shadows are on the left side, so I will make sure that I'm darker there. And I'll make that dark and this darker. Bring out some textures on this side. And this comes out in front, so this is back. I want that to be a little darker, just in there. So see how that pushes that back and this comes out a little lighter. And if it doesn't, if it isn't in the right spot that you want, you can come back and fix it. So this is darker here than here because this is out in my, in my area. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm just taking a little alcohol and putting a little max in there, just little hits and getting an idea that there's little branches in there. Who knows? And maybe some little branches coming off, maybe some grassy little textures coming off in here. And a little bit there. So I was told the other day, oh, how you did so much detail. Well, look at all I'm doing is scribbling. There's not that much detail. It just looks like there's a lot of detail. You're the master of illusion, you know, as an artist. We make 2D look 3D. That's what we do. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's my bones. And then it comes forward. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'm going to move this because I don't want this to get destroyed. And what I want to do is spritz. Now I got a fan on, so we'll see what happens. And you see it's spritzing here, so I need to come up a little bit more to get it to spritz where I want. And as it dries, you get all these beautiful textures in the background like snow. See that? And I'm gonna get my paper towel ready, my dirty little paper towel because it's got a lot of messiness on it and I don't mind that. I'm gonna spritz a lot at the top and then blot. It makes for more snow, you see that? Now I'm gonna do a little bit right in here and then blot. And I don't care if the whole thing even got washed out. It doesn't matter because I keep going back and forth. But this is how I get that beautiful look. Look at all this brokenness. Look how beautiful. Where do you look? Right here. That's where I'm looking for. Now I go back again with some alcohol in my brush. And I bought some more docks. Where? In the parts that turn away from me. In the parts that are forward, I leave light. Back spot. The back spot here. Showing the direction of the light. And of course you can do more branches. I'm not gonna do a lot. So just to give you the idea of how it works. And I'm just gonna tap on this with alcohol now, just alcohol. And let it sit for a second and then blot. Do you see how that breaks up so beautifully? I guess I should have called this a whole lot of blotting going on, huh? Anyway, just texting, texting, tickle, tickle, doing a lot of tickling, putting some alcohol right on there and block. Breaks it up really nice. This will be a little lighter right in here. And then block. So fun. And these are going to be bushes. So this is bushes. So what I want to do is I don't want to lose my white, but I do want to give a tint of, because all these little tints turn into branches. Everybody thinks they have to do all these branches. You really don't. You just have to give the hint of a branch behind there. That's it. Maybe some, I have less ink on my brush so I can get a nice 
change. I don't want all my branches high. I want some low. Just blot some color down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So that's how I go about doing it. So, but now I, I really intensify my work. Oh, I'm gonna see what do I got. I do a lot of oh, that's kind of a dirty brush, but that's all right. Adds a little flavor to my monochromatic. It's still monochromatic. It's a gray. I guess you could say this is a gray painting now because I painted. Uh, it's got a little mess in it, but that's all right. It works good. Once you get over that, you can fix anything. You you become quite good at what you do. I'll even take one of these uh, alcohol ink blending pens. Now Ranger has a new blend pen. And it's a lot better than it was. So I want to let you know that I think this works really great now. They When they first came out with a new blending pen, it wasn't as good, but this one is awesome. Look at this. This is really nice. And I can lift back out some light. Let's say I want some light back in here. I can pull it back in. So this is a really great bending pen and you can get that at Ranger. I also want to let you know is you see how I use these little skirts on my bottles so they don't tip over. You know how that works, right? These bottles just go what? Flying. So I use these ink cozies. And these are a great stocking stuffer along with this. So you might consider getting yourself some ink cozies. You can go online. You can get them at Ranger. You can get them uh, on Amazon, all these items. And I'm just... Adding a little more texture. Okay, now I'm gonna come back with a little dock and I wanna dock in in here. I wanna feel the, the essence of a shadow from, and then I'm gonna have some, uh, some depth to it here. So I want this to come out into my space. So I need a little shadow here too, like as if there's a few branches coming out into my zone. This is where you get a lot more professional looking because you're not thinking just horizontally all the time. So I just want to show you the difference. See how beautiful this is. What if I just went and put in a big, long, dark line, like a lot of what I see? I mean, look at the difference. What do you like better? You know, it looks really a lot nicer with a little depth to it and break things up. Don't always think you have to be dark. So this is what I'm going to do. So I did that, right? So what? So when I come back and I just... Wipe out my brush. Throw some alcohol on that. And blah. And I go right back to looking beautiful because it breaks things up. You're not looking consistently. One big long line does not look that great to me. Everybody has their own opinion. And don't be afraid to express your own opinion. But this is my opinion. And I, my opinion, that looks way better. <laughs> You could tickle just the edges if you notice it's too much. But what I want to show you is how I tint. So um, there's hardly anything on this brush. See that? And I can tint a little bit and give it a little more depth. Look at the shadow I'm getting. And that's putting mood into my picture. I want a little more darkness back here where the bushes are in the background. So I just go in with that. And you'd think there's nothing on the brush, but there is. There's a lot on the brush. So what I like to do is just get the tint on there of what I want. Some trees in the background. You could have another little tree here. Who knows? You can have anything. I just scribble and look for things. But you think there's nothing here, but there's a lot on that brush. You just keep rouging it in. Okay. Then take your spritzer bottle again and give it a spritz. And it'll all break up. And give it a chance to dry. Don't pick it up. And if you want, you can blot and get off the excess and make more snow. I might do a little, little bit more in the steps. Okay. So now what I want to do is put in a few more branches just to show you how I get this one thing going. So I get these little bushes coming off the side. So what I want to do is just... I look for the little lines in this. See how this line comes out like that? I follow whatever the, the universe gives me. It's almost like painting with the universe, everybody. I'm not kidding. If you follow what the world gives you, the, the mother, mother nature, and all that, you, you get a lot better result. So there's that. I'm going to put a little nodule and get that there. 
but I just want to show you how I follow these little lines. There's my little branches. If I want extra branches, I put them in. If I like it broken up, I'll let it break up. I don't want it too juicy, so I break it up. Sometimes I'll put little dots. Dots are great because your mind fills in the holes. It's kind of like looking at clouds. So people say to me, how do you know where the texture goes? Where do you know this or that? And I'm like, well, think of it like clouds. When you look at clouds, you can see little animals and such things. So that's how you kind of start practicing that. Now I want to make sure you're looking right here. So I just kind of reinforce where it's darkest, where the turns are, what's further away. Maybe a little branch up there, little dots. Not everywhere. See how I skip a spot or two. See that little line? I'm following it a little bit. And look at the line in the background. It looks like a tree in the background. Look at all these background trees just from scribbles. It works really great. Now I'm just going to reinforce this particular pot a little bit, but not as much as here because I want you looking here now. And I can make little lines in the background for trees. And it just adds depth. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Now let's say I want some more light in here. I want a lot of light in this area because it brings you into the back. Plus the sunlight is coming down, although it's not really, I would call this a sunny day. I call this like one of those brisk winter days. And then I'm breaking up this, just tapping it with my blending pen. These blending pens, I'm not kidding, is they're really, really good. You need to get one. Put that on your stocking stuffer list. And now I'm just poking holes and I blot with it. Wipe out your brush, keeps it clean, your tip, your nub. And you can come back in here and make as many little dots and breaks in the, in the trees in the background. So it's easy as that. You put them wherever you want. So this is a little hash to me right here. Do you see that? So I'm gonna just take my brush and I tend to use a lot of uh, these small round brushes. And I'm just going to soften it by just tapping on it with a damp brush. Do you see how I get that nice look? Look at that. And maybe I would like a branch to come forward. I really want a branch forward. So I might just uh, put a line in here and bring it down. So it, don't always think of things as sideways. you you got to bring a few pieces over in the front. It just makes things more natural looking. And just kind of tap on it. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe that out. And then I'm going to make my shadow post. And I'm just going to put a little shadow. Ooh, that was a little juicy. Not a big deal. Don't freak out. Put a few little shadows here. Maybe this one comes out in front, a little, a little stick coming down, whatever. Scribble, scribble. If you're not sure, just scribble and reinforce it later. But this area is a little bit darker, so I don't, it's not too wet of a brush, but I want a shadow there and a nice little clump of a shadow there. And then as it comes out, it gets a little lighter. and gives nice detail where I want it. Now you can get fancy. So let's say I don't want this amount of chromatic and you want something to break it up. Well, first of all, I'm looking over here really strong, but I'm not really flowing. So I wanna kind of look down, up and around and then come back down. So what I wanna do is put a little more dark right back in here. But do you see how I'm just, just popping it in? I'm not, I don't want a line. See how that became a line? I just break it up. And I can bring little stems looking things and I don't have to tell everybody everything, just throw the stem in there. People will make in their own minds where those go. But what I want is this to come up. So I'll get a little more black and just softly do it. I don't want it strong. You see how I'm just layering? Look at there's hardly anything on that brush, but look at how I can get more dark. See that? That's very important. When you learn to do that, you're really getting a beautiful, beautiful professional painting. 
because you're controlling what you want. You know what you want. It's like control in chaos. So if you can get that down, you're going to do some magical stuff. Just little dots. Bring it up. I want this one low because I want height changes. So little dots. Little dots do a lot, believe me. And then I want to bring my brush back in, my bigger brush. Not that it's big. This isn't what, a number two or so. Yeah, it says number six, but I'll tell you, every company, it's different. Some say number six, and it's like, yeah, right. It's like a two. <laughs> so I'm just darkening a little bit for the shadows, because shadows are so effective in, um, in a painting. So I just want to wipe that out. There's hardly anything on it, and just soften. Look at that. That's the magic. You've got to learn to do that. Maybe a little shadow back here coming across so that this lightens that up. So instead of kind of keep eating into it to get things light, try and think of where can you put some dark because dark will make another area lit. I'm going to go darker right in here just to show you how little bit is on my brush. But yet the more I rouge into it, the little more darkness I get. So that looks pretty nice. So let's just say, like I said, um, I want a little bit more dark. And then I wipe out my brush. Wipe it out, hardly anything. I want this dark over here. And I'm just popping little dots. And I can spritz again, you know. But the thing is, this brings it over and it kind of gives a little texture to it and it also brings a little darkness to it so this will lighten up for me so if you want something to get lighter you actually don't take paint off you actually make some other area darker so consider that when you're having problems doing things such as that okay so that looks pretty cool and this is darker back here it just kind of makes the background convincing that it's trees back there a little brush and that's how I build it. So anyway, that looks pretty nice. And then you take that dirty brush and bring it up forward for texture in the foreground. Okay. So let's say I'm going to take this one step further. Let's say I want to I want to make this not monochromatic. So I'm taking it to the next level. I want a little cardinal in here. So I can take this is uh, the center of interest. If you're not sure where your center of interest is, it, it, you turn it upside down, you can say, boom, it's right there. So this would be a good spot for a little bird. So maybe I'd put a little bird eh, right around this area somewhere, and I don't want a bullseye in the middle. So I'm thinking right back here, a little bird. And it's that easy. Just a little round circle. Bring its tail down. People know it's a bird. You can get real fancy and get back into your black and keep it in that monochromatic thing of black. But yet it is, has a nice reddish hue. Now I'll take a little crimson and put that right in the front. Do you see how that pops out a lot? You can keep it as bright as you want. If you want it brighter, all you do is blot. Throw some more ink on it. See how you can get it brighter? I mean, it's just a matter of what you want. I think that's kind of cool, though, because it's a little cardinal and it's winter. You always see cardinals in the winter. Even here in Arizona, I got cardinals. So anyway, I just want to soften it. I don't want it to look like color forms for those who know what those are. I'm just going to soften them down. There you go. Voila. A beautiful painting. So anyway, I hope this gives you an idea how to do winter scenes. Um, they're not that difficult. You can come back with your your uh, blending pen again and put a few more little holes in. Break up that line, I don't like that line, you know me. But that's just me, you can do that. It's, I don't want you to know. I want you to know <laughs> that you can do anything you want. Ah, uh, this is my technique. This is uh, Sharon Harris School of Art. So it doesn't mean that it's the technique. It means this is an idea that you can do and you can move on with your own idea, but it helps. We share, we work with each other. We help share ideas. And that's what makes a, a good artist. You know, you pay attention to learn new stuff. So anyway, I hope this helped you out. Please comment, uh, send me emails, send me 
pictures of your artwork if you try doing it. I'd love to see it. And I uh, hope this helps you out in uh, playing with your alcohol inks. So that's my quick and easy down and dirty winter tree scene. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And I hope next year is a hell of a lot better than this one. Till next time, everybody. Goodbye.